do we work? Is it simply to pay the bills? Why is it we give time freely to others? The Lebanese poet Khalil Gibran in his book, The Prophet, provides what for me is a beautiful answer to these questions. He summarizes the answer in these words. Work is love made visible. <laughs> so simple, yet so profound. Perhaps it's my Lebanese heritage, but Gibran's words touch me deep within. So who was this poet, painter, philosopher, and mystic? Gibran, Khalil Gibran, was born in Lebanon in 1883 and emigrated to the US in 1894. He was born in the same town as my, one of my grandparents at about the same time. I sometimes wonder whether they met. I hope they did. Well, Gibran returned from the US to Lebanon to complete his education, then took a long meandering journey back to the US through Greece, Spain, Italy and France, where during a two year stay in Paris, he studied painting and sculpture, including a period working with the great sculptor Rodin. He returned to America in 1903, where he remained until his death in 1931. It was Gibran's writing that brought him fame in the West, but he'd already shown his talent with literary works in areas such as Arabic poetry and with his painting. However, 1923 saw the publication of, of the best known of Gibran's English language works, The Prophet. This powerful, though short work, can be described as a series of meditations on life. It has become one of the most translated books with editions available in more than 100 languages. So why is this book so popular? Well, for me, it's Gibran's ability to write words of truth in simple and clear language. Claude Bragdon describes this ability beautifully. He says, Gibran's power came from some great reservoir of spiritual life. But the majesty and beauty of the language with which he clothed it were all his own. <laughs> Remarkable words to say about someone whose first language was not even English. In fact, Gibran didn't translate the Arabic version of the prophet, but rewrote it in English. So let's return to his statement on work. This occurs part way through the book which is a series of answers the prophet gives to some of life's most challenging questions. In this case, the people have asked him to speak to them of work. So, Shabran opens the answer by stating clearly that work is not an add-on, but an essential part of life. He says, You work that you may keep pace with the earth and the soul of the earth. For to be idle is to become a stranger unto the seasons and to step out of life's procession that marches in majesty and proud submission towards the infinite. When you work, you are a flute through whose heart the whispering of the hours turns to music. Which of you would be a reed, dumb and silent, when all else sings together in unison? work, not only essential, but perhaps a way to unity and joy. But he knows us well, so immediately deals with our most common objection to work. He says, always you have been told that work is a curse and labor a misfortune. But I say to you that when you work, you fulfill a part of Earth's furthest dream assigned to you when that dream was born. And in keeping yourself with labor, you are, in truth, loving life. And to love life through labor is to be intimate with life's inmost secret. Are these words describing something that draws us to look deeper into our lives? To study philosophy, perhaps? Great teachers have offered the same message in many ways, but the, the simplicity and the clarity of these few words, for me, 
connects the truth in this statement with something deep within. Gibran's words challenge us to look again, to look deeper. He is uncompromising. He confronts any easy answer I may have for why the work I do is not always love made visible. In his words again, all work is empty save when there is love. And when you work with love, you bind yourself to yourself and to one another and to God. And then most importantly, he guides us on how our attitudes might be changed. Again, and what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. It is to build a house with affection, even as if your beloved were to dwell in that house. It is to sow seeds with tenderness and reap the harvest with joy, even as if your beloved were to eat the fruit. It is to charge all things you fashion with the breath of your own spirit. What a vision. But how can I work like that? Well, Gibran gives us guidance and hope. In his words. Often have I heard you say, he who works in marble and finds the shape of his own soul in the stone is nobler than he who ploughs the soil. But I say that the wind speaks not more sweetly to the giant oaks than to the least of all the blades of grass. And he alone is great who turns the voice of the wind into a song made sweeter by his own loving. Towards the end of his meditation on work, Gibran introduces the line that we opened with. Again, he is uncompromising. Work is love made visible. And if you cannot work with love, but only with distaste, it is better that you should leave your work and sit at the gate of the temple and take alms of those who would work with joy. For if you bake bread with indifference, you bake a bitter bread that feeds but half man's hunger. And if you grudge the crushing of the grapes, your grudge distills a poison in the wine. And if you sing, though as angels, and love not the singing, you muffle man's ears to the voices of the day and the voices of the night. Shibran Khalil Shibran, a poet whose life's work met his own challenge. For me, his work was love made visible.